Hey guys, in this video I want to go over hammers and chisels with you and I hope to do it really quickly because they're pretty basic tools. So let's go ahead and jump right in and let's start talking with the ball peam hammer. So ball peam hammer is sometimes called machinist hammer. These are pretty popular for punching out rivets and stuff like that. So this, this front face is able to hit that rivet very easily while the back face is able to you know either use a punch or something like that. Uh, these these hammers are usually a little bit on the small side there you can't typically you can't find a very big ball peen hammer they're kind of used for some smaller work uh, we've got a couple of these i think we have about five or six of these ball peen hammers they're really good you can do a lot of things like uh, you can make gaskets with them these ball peen hammers are probably the number one most popular hammer after the ball peen hammer we have the sledgehammer and notice this is a one-handed sledgehammer and i believe it's uh two to four pounds and, and it's one-handed, so that way you can hold it with just one hand. I do recommend uh, when you're swinging any hammer, don't be choked up here, get it back here, okay? You're gonna have a lot more leverage in the end, so always kind of grip it at the end. Like I said, this is a one-handed hammer. Sometimes the sledgehammers like this come in two-handed style. Um, usually they're about 12 pounds, uh, then they have a three-foot handle on them. We don't have one in our shop. We do have one around the school if we do need it. It's not, it's not something we use every day, so that's why we just share it. This, this hammer is kind of used for everything. When I, when I used to work, I used one of these more than any other hammer, mainly because it's, you get that extra weight, let the hammer do the work for you, as opposed to really just kind of getting after that punch or something like that. Uh, these are great hammers. I think we just bought this one at Home Depot and it's, it's been a great one. Next thing I want to talk about is just a claw hammer. Uh, claw hammers are not super popular in this area, but I wanted to bring them up just because uh, you don't want to reuse in a claw hammer to do certain items. So remember when I talked about the ball peam here, one of the reasons people like ball peams is because they can't chip or dent or scratch a lot of things like this one that has a lot of sharp edges on it. Uh, so if you, you should try to use this one, leave this one at home, leave this one on the construction site, unless you're doing something like a facilities maintenance type job where you need to have an actual hammer and be pulling out nails and things like that. The last style of hammer I want to talk about is just a compathane or a rubber hammer. There's a whole bunch of names for them, a mallet. These are just kind of a rubberized hammer. Usually they have some weight inside of them. So they're like a dead blow is what they'll call it. So that the, all the material flies to that one side of the hammer and causes it to uh, have a little bit more strength. Now, typically what you'd be using this one for is anytime you're assembling, anytime you're working on some machine parts, you're gonna use these rubber hammers quite a bit. And there's a variety, a quite a large variety of sizes that you can get them in. I've got this, this little small one. We use this one in the machine shop all the time. And then I got this massive one, and this one's practically a two-handed hammer with a really short handle. I think it's about, it might be six pounds or something like that. And this one, you can really get into some tight spots and be you know, hammering away at something. The cool thing about rubber hammers as opposed to a steel hammer is you're, again, you're not gonna be mushrooming out pins, you're not gonna be mushrooming out uh, parts or denting things or causing it to chip off or something like that. Rubber hammers are really cool. They're, they're worth the money to buy them. So next, I wanna talk a little bit about punches. Now, punches, there's about 40 billion different styles of punches out there, and there's no way that we can go through all of them. You can literally go and buy a set of 150 different types of punches. Uh, so, like I said, we're gonna just go over the few that are most popular and probably you're gonna use 95% of the time. First one I wanna start with, this is just a chisel. The chisel might be used for, you know, punching off a head on a, a rivet. It might be for driving out a, um, like a wedge. It could be used for taking off little bits of metal. Punches are pretty awesome. Usually they come in uh, multiple sizes. You got really thick, wide ones. You've got really thin, skinny ones. This one's kind of like a mid-size one. Just remember that the hardest part of a punch is this tip right here, and it's very easy to crack it or break this off. Next, I wanna talk about center punches. And center punches are kinda of cool. What you would use a center punch for is to maybe drive a pin out possibly, but more than likely just to dent a piece of metal so that way when you go ahead and start drilling it, it doesn't wander, it doesn't walk around. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to use one of these things right now. All right, so like I said, we're gonna show you how to use that center punch. So when using that center punch, the first thing that you wanna do is you're gonna go ahead and lay out your scribe lines. And all I'm gonna do, and I'm not gonna use bluing dye on this one just yet, that will be something we use later on. And all we're gonna do is just scratch it with 
the um, scribe, and I'm just going to do an X because this is not doesn't really have a, a lot of point to it. This was not the best scribe in the world by far. Okay, so now that I've got my, my line scribe, they're kind of hard to see. I'm going to take my, my center punch and I'm going to kind of lay it sideways. Kind of see that the tip is now perfectly on my X and then I'm going to flip it up. Oops, kind of lost it there. And then I'm going to flip it up right until it's straight up and down and then I'm going to strike it once. I'm going to try to do it just in one strike and I'm going to look at it. And as you can see, I did pretty dang good about getting it right in the middle there, okay? Now, like I said, you're gonna wanna use one hard strike. You don't wanna do a bunch of small ones. Get in the habit of just one good swing and you'll get what you want. And that's how you use a center punch. The last two things I wanna to talk to you about are a drift, which is just a regular punch for pushing out items, and a roll pin punch. Now, these are, these are great for just taking out any pin or any, any item that you just need to punch out. It could be, you know, like I said, it could be a hinge on a, uh, or not a hinge, a hinge pin, I guess, um, or something like that. You need to just punch it out. This is what you would use one of these guys for. Typically, you could also punch out races, a bearing races. You do tons of stuff with these guys. They're kind of like, they're the workhorse. And uh, there's, there, again, there's a ton of different sizes of these guys. The roll pin punches are kind of designed for pushing out roll pins or, or very small pins. The reason that they're different is because there's no tapering along this, this piece right here. It doesn't taper up, it's just perfectly straight. So that way you can punch that roll pin out. Another thing is it's properly sized so that way it won't catch the edges of that hole. These are great to have um, if you do a lot of roll pins. They're, oh, it's really nice to get a set of these guys. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to punches is just a little bit of punch safety. And when I say punch safety, obviously we need to be wearing our face protection or some sort of safety glasses, possibly even a face shield, depending on what we're hammering on or punching, and also hearing protection. Those, the hammering effect can become very loud and actually could damage your ears quite quickly. It's kind of like the, a gunshot, it's very loud. So remember, if you're ever doing a lot of hammering, you need to put your hearing protection in. Lastly, you want to make sure that you grind off this mushroom right out here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to fix that right now. What the idea is that if, once it becomes mushroom, if you hit it, those chips will fly off sideways, possibly hit, hit you or hit somebody else. So you want to always keep this edge perfectly round. That way it doesn't have any problems. Okay, so I got you over here at the bench grinder because we're going to take off that that mushroom that we were talking about. This one's not very bad, they get pretty bad, so it's, it's good to stay on top of them like we are today. Now, a couple things I want you to notice, I'm not, really, I'm not wearing any long sleeves, I might even, here we'll even take off my watch right now just in case, throw that in my pocket, just in case. I don't wanna ruin it anyway. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna take it, put it on here, and we're just gonna slowly rotate it while it's being ground on. We're actually probably gonna rotate it this way, that way it doesn't get sucked in. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it on, let it get to speed, and then we're going to go ahead and slowly grind that off. Alright, so now you can see that it's nicely rounded all the way around the top. There's no chip or uh, no mushroom that could possibly chip off. So this would be a safe uh, punch to be using now.